From your home to City Hall, from your neighborhood to the White House, and from your city to the world and beyond, this is Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Good evening, Alpha Citizens. This is Craig Allen. Tuesday evening sunset was disrupted by a fierce battle in the skies between Presto the Witch, current magical Primus Adeptus over our plane of existence, and an otherworldly magical being who seemed to be made of shadow. Intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston, interviewing Presto after the battle's end, learned that the intruder identified herself as Care Tenebrae and claimed her appearance in our dimension was to extract vengeance for the destruction of something or someone she referred to as the Obsidian Scar. Presto's formidable sorcery had identified Care Tenebrae's approach as a threat, Lindy was informed, and the invader had found herself facing not a world unprepared, but an opponent both skilled and dedicated to defeating her. Care Tenebrae's defeat by Presto was a foregone conclusion, though Presto did admit that Tenebrae's magical might would have made the victory no small challenge. Tenebrae's fate was truly sealed, though, when, in a blast of sapphire light, the Blue Beacon returned to Alpha City. So immense was the Beacon's impact on the heroic world that even today, more than a decade and a half after he left to fight evil in far-off realms, he is still considered second only to Radiant in terms of power, sheer effectiveness, and general heroic attitude. Legend has it that, as a young man, the plane he was flying over the Appalachians crashed during a freak storm, and when the young man awoke, he found himself in a monastery, itself in a hidden valley of amazing peace and beauty, where the keepers of the azure light of justice nursed him back to health, and, eventually, chose him as the next bearer of their legendary tools of virtue. Leaving the monks by way of a treacherous cave that connected the extra-dimensional valley to Appalachia, Blue Beacon came onto the world stage only months after Radiant began our new age of superheroes. Appearing little older than he did when he left Alpha City just before the turn of the century, the Blue Beacon, wearing the azure gemmed gauntlet of power with the similarly colored lamp-shaped power conduit on his hip, stood with Presto to make short work of Care Tenebrae, finally caging her in a cerulean prison. While the beacon did not appear to have aged, he was somewhat the worst for wear, and leaving the captured villainess in Presto's capable hands, quickly vanished once again. Presto shared with Lindy Johnston that the Blue Beacon had returned to our plane of reality immediately after finally defeating a beast of evil known as the Obsidian Scar, who was, in fact, Care Tenebrae's father. Though the Obsidian Scar's home reality is far from ours, his actions had far-reaching consequences, and the Hierophant of the Blue Monastery had been forced to send the Blue Beacon to face the Scar directly. Blushing slightly, Presto admitted that the Beacon had told her that the Hierophant would never have considered sending the Beacon away, had not she known that the Earth's next Primus Adeptus, Presto herself, was about to appear. The final battle with the Obsidian Scar had wounded the Blue Beacon, and taxed his powers to the point where he had thought he would be able to do little more than fight a holding action, probably to the death, against Care Tenebrae, while other heroes were rallied to the fight. Finding himself fighting alongside Presto had averted that worst-case scenario, thankfully, and the Blue Beacon had used the last of his power to return to the hidden valley where his adventures had begun, to rest and recharge. Presto also related that the Beacon was looking forward to seeing the 21st century, as he knew that the three years he had spent in the Obsidian Scar's reality equaled almost five times as many years passing here in his home. We here at Alpha City News hope that the Blue Beacon finds that we have all done our best to follow his sterling example during the years of his absence. Alpha City was graced with the presence of Japanese hero Dashing Owl Green over the last week. 
The celebrated Japanese hero followed his longtime nemesis, Dr. Death Prism, when the villain fled to our city following the defeat of his latest evil scheme. The pair played cat and mouse through, above, and below the streets of Alpha City, with both Dashing Owl Green and Dr. Death Prism aiding and being aided by local heroes and villains. Dr. Death Prism sought help from both Battleship Bismarck and the Folded Crane Ninja, but also fought the American Death Prism, though the American villain proved woefully underpowered compared to his Far East adversary, and it is unknown if he survived the encounter. Dashing Owl Green met with both Sebastian If and the Bright Man, helping them in their battles against the Unman and Gregorius Chant, respectively. The final confrontation, however, took place in the foothills outside of the city where, to cover his escape after nearly being captured by Dashing Owl Green, Dr. Death Prism summoned a giant monster called Deadly Bunny, which forced Dashing Owl Green to summon his giant robot companion, the Gunhammer Black. Gunhammer Black and the Deadly Bunny scrapped for almost ten minutes before the wounded monster was forced to flee back to its own dimension. Dashing Owl Green and Gunhammer Black were quickly able to find that Dr. Death Prism had left the planet, and the two soared into the skies, lest the vile mastermind escape for good. This broadcaster wishes them luck wherever the trail leads them. Things became more than a little offbeat on Friday when the Dancing Master attempted to rob the Folsom Avenue branch of the Meridian Bank. The villain entered the bank at approximately 10.30 a.m. on Friday and, as per the Dancing Master's usual modus operandi, began playing late 70s funk on a boombox, which allowed him to use his super ability, namely forcing all who could hear the music, to begin dancing. While the patrons and employees were occupied bouncing to the thumping bass line, the dancing master began to collect the cash from both the teller's drawers and the bank's vaults. It is believed that the dancing master had chosen this particular day and time because he had learned that a large amount of cash was being delivered in preparation for the coming long weekend, which would allow him to make off with the money already in the bank, the cash delivery, and whatever other money might be stored in the armored car making the delivery. Fortunately, the polyrhythmic pair known as Groovetron and Funkbot made the scene before the Dancing Master had managed to collect more than a token amount from the bank. Increasing the power of his dance mania, the Dancing Master forced the bank guards to break dance fight with the dancing do-gooders, while he himself made for the armored car and his escape. While Groovetron handled the reluctant attackers, Funkbot managed to leap aboard the moving armored car, anchoring itself with its built-in boot magnets. Funkbot then loaded a track by the band Fishbone on its eternal sound system, and, true to the song's title, skanked to the beat hard enough for the armored car to suffer mechanical failure. This caused the car to careen into a bridge abutment, throwing Funkbot from the roof. By the time the music-loving robot recovered and returned to the vehicle, the Dancing Master had vanished, although a later accounting showed that he had escaped with less than $3,000 a far cry from the hundreds of thousands he had hoped to take. The gang war on the streets of Flottown between the Mercedes organization and an upstart group known as the Machine Head seems to be drawing to a close, although there is some indication that this is far from a good thing. While the Mercedes and the Machine Head seemed to be of almost equal power during the early stages of the war, it has become apparent that this is no longer the case. The Mercedes, after almost two weeks of battles that sometimes took place in broad daylight, have seen their numbers dwindle, while the Machine Heads, though losing many of their own people, actually seem to be gaining in strength. The actively press and police-averse Street Rat has contacted both the Alpha City Police Department Internal Affairs Chief Donald Wentz and Alpha City News' own intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston, giving them disturbing information showing that not only has Flottown's homeless population been vanishing, but that disappearances have increased all over the city amongst those who have almost no one to miss them. 
Equally disturbing is the appearance that the officers of the 13th Precinct, which ostensibly patrols Floptown, might actually be responsible for some of the disappearances. Police spokesman Charles Anderton has responded to questions about this matter by assuring the public that the ACPD is investigating the matter as they do with all reports of police malfeasance, further stating that the Street Rat's information will be treated as seriously as it would be if obtained from any normal citizen, but that there are still warrants for his arrest. Pardon me, I'm being handed breaking news. As we speak, investigators from ACPD Internal Affairs Office are apparently under fire from the building which houses the 13th Precinct. Reporting from the spot, Lindy Johnston is saying that as soon as the Internal Affairs detectives exited their vehicles, officers of the precinct stormed out of the precinct house, all wearing the distinctive head-covering helmets of the machine heads. These officers were about to open fire on the investigators when the street rat appeared, distracting the helmeted attackers and giving the surprised officers time to gain cover. As we speak, the ACPD SWAT team is being scrambled to the scene even as a small army of machine heads have appeared to bolster the members who seem to have taken over the 13th precinct. Other squads are attempting to lock down other key streets in Floptown. That is all the information we have on this at this point, but we will, of course, be bringing you more news as it becomes available. This has been Alpha City News, written and produced by Carter Lee. The character of the Blue Beacon was created and allowed for use by Alpha Citizen number one, Josh Downing. Thanks a lot, Josh. If any other Alpha Citizens would like to get in touch with me, you can drop me an email at alphacitynews at gmail.com. You can also sponsor the show by going to patreon.com and searching for Alpha City News. And there's some cool things that the first patrons will get, including stuff like having characters of your own creation showcased on the show. So go and check it out. Again, that's at patreon.com under Alpha City News. I'd also hugely appreciate it if you could leave reviews at iTunes or leave a comment at rhymeswithgeek.com. Rhymeswithgeek.com, in addition to hosting my podcast, is also a great place to get the latest news, reviews, and podcasts about all things comic-related. So check them out, because they're pretty cool. And until next time, Alpha Citizens, you have a great week. Woo!